There are political disputes, controversies, and kerfuffles, but nothing quite captures the attention of Washington like a full-throated scandal. But what's the threshold, and who decides? President Obama under a cloud of scandal. A trio of scandals. The White House hits a scandal trifecta. Scandal? Really? While there's no doubt the Obama administration has its hands full with controversies, ranging from the IRS to Benghazi to the subpoena of AP phone records, are they really full-fledged scandals? Well, I'm not a crook. With creeps, lies, and subterfuge leading directly to the Oval Office, Watergate remains the gold standard of modern political scandals. Ali North has been using money from the Iranian arms transactions to support the Contras. Second place goes to the botched illegal arms deal known as Iran-Contra. Then there are the sex scandals. Who can forget the booze-fueled splash Wilbur Mills made with stripper Fanny Fox? The monkey business that sank Gary Hart. Or Anthony Weiner captured with his pants down. And then there's Bill Clinton. I did not have sexual relations with that woman. He managed to combine abuse of power and sex. What else can you say? As for the IRS and Benghazi, both deserve serious scrutiny. But to call them scandals is a stretch. Yeah, it seems to me what's happened here is that this term has become politicized like everything else in our modern day culture. So that's an application that people are putting to this who feel strongly one way or the other about Benghazi or the IRS investigation. But it doesn't have the elements, would you agree, of a full of a full scandal on the likes of any of those things. I mean, scandal by its nature has some seamy, dark underside, you know, something you desperately want to keep hidden and secret and, you know, and, and it seems to me those two just don't rise to that. I think this really started when the first time after 1974 or so when someone took an unrelated scandal and added gate to the end yeah, of it. Yeah. <laughs> and that was sort of the first example of take, taking something and blowing it up into some proportion it doesn't deserve. I mean, I think in this case you look at one thing that, that the rise of digital media has done has made meant that there are many more scandals that people that live in little circles. You know, you think of all the things that people said about President Obama. And the birth certificate was sort of one piece of it, but it drifted down. And there's these scandals that have a way of, of becoming scandals uh, when they don't really quite deserve it. I think in this case, though, you, do, you did see in this week in the IRS case, the media sort of uh, move along and moderate the, the, the attention a bit. Uh, a week ago, people were thinking that this was an Obama scandal. Then it became became an Obama administration scandal. It's sort of become more of an IRS scandal at this mm -hmm. point. Democrats have jumped in and sort of you know, made it about a rogue player in the, in the agency. Uh, so I think that over time, the media can be susceptible to following outrage from someone in the opposite party and blowing it out of proportion. But I do think it tends to balance itself out. Yeah, I mean, the, the problem of the IRS scandal uh, is that... Uh, <laughs> I'm calling it a scandal. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to call it a scandal. Uh, the, the media have a hard time with complicated stories. Yeah. And, and here you have a situation where uh, the IRS appeared to be using uh, some fairly scandalous methodology uh, to pursue ends that were completely legitimate uh, because these these... Uh, Tea Party groups apparently were involved, and some of them were involved in politics in a way that they weren't supposed to be under the uh, the, the tax status that they were seeking. Uh, so it becomes all very complicated. Uh, I think some of the air came out of uh, the Benghazi story uh, when it was revealed that um, Jonathan Carl had let himself get played mm. uh, over those uh, emails mm -hmm. between the state house, uh, the, the state department. Mm -hmm. And the uh, the CIA, and he ended up having to back down and, and apologize for that. Well, they released all the emails too, uh, and, kind of and, and, and mm. they released all the emails. And so then we're left with the with the AP story, which is certainly an abuse of power. Uh, I don't know whether it's a scandal or not. It's probably the sort of abuse of power that a lot of Americans, unfortunately, would support because yeah. it was done in the name of, uh, national, of security. national security. Well, it seems to me that there are three intimately linked parts of any political scandal. You've got the allegations made by political opponents or the criticisms made by them. You've got the way it's covered in the media. And then you've got the way that the administration in question responds. And the administration's response affects those other two things and can make matters worse for whoever happens to be in power. And I think that the Obama administration, look at their handling of the IRS story, which, as you point out, is a complicated one. But if you have an IRS commissioner taking the fifth, for example, and choosing 
just to not talk at all, as opposed to trying to explain mm -hmm. why what happened shouldn't be connected to the president, say, for example. Or if you have President Obama talking about the IRS activity, saying, you know, I'm mad too, and Americans should be mad, then the administration is making things worse for itself. So I think it's easy to point fingers at the press and say, oh, we don't do political, or sorry, we don't do complicated stories well. People need to, uh, you know, dig harder and not just talk about what the narrative is. But the way the administration responds makes a difference, and the Obama administration hasn't helped itself here. Okay, so there's a lot of what you've each said that I agree with, but let me quote fictional character Olivia Pope from Scandal, the series, <laughs> in which she says you must handle it and you have to tell the truth. That's how you handle a, a scandal. But when you have three controversies at once, it became one scandal. People are saying scandals. No. So it became one scandal because they were all happening at once, and it just made every each one of them look bigger. Um, um, and so then when you had a moment to step back and start to peel back, okay, well, what exactly does this mean? Um, okay, so then you can say, well, no, no one of them has the big S. But all of them together felt very intense and heavy, I think, to to every American, even if they don't appreciate the AP story. They know that's not supposed to be happening. And now we have what's happened with Jay, with the Rosen uh, reporter followed up on that. So that's a piece of that. And then you have the situation where, th even though it's clear that there was some politically charged stuff going on with Benghazi, it, it's again in the context of these other two things happening at the same time. Mm -hmm. And I think the IRS is something that we all, as Americans, are suspicious of. We know that they didn't just target conservatives now, but they have always, they in the past, targeted churches, for example, liberal churches, talking politics, the NAACP. So it's been all around. And some people are sitting at home going, and they targeted me. So I believe this. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just saying it all yeah. coming together yeah, a gave, made a heavier statement than it would have any, yeah. one, any, yeah. any one of them individually. Yeah.